for show. When they look through the tomb, they're asking everybody, yo, where did he go? Cause he's not here. And the soldiers out there, looking all spook while they're trembling in fear. Asking each other what really happened out here. J E S G S, one day, put to death, third day, rose again. Power in his hand with a master plan. He already knew before the world begins, and he wants you to know he's coming again. So go and tell your family, friends. Miracle of Love. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> now let's get warmed up with this song. Everyone get bouncing. And then I want to see some big jumps. <laughs> all right, now this song is all about what Jesus did for us on Easter. So as we sing this out, you guys, remember that Jesus did this all for you guys. Let's start by singing. It's a new day. Let's put our hands like this. You ready? Here we go. It's a new With this sacrifice, with this sacrifice, death has been defeated. The Son of God, risen King, bringing us into God's family. Oh, let's proclaim our saving grace is Jesus. Let's sing some O's. out this miracle of love.
that song, you guys can all go ahead and sit down. As we were singing out that song, I was thinking about the Easter story of all that Jesus did for us. And you guys, at the end of the Easter story, we saw that Jesus was alive. But the cool thing is, that's not even the end of the story. After Jesus came back at Easter, he spent 40 days appearing to people and showing them that he was really alive. And I know that because of this book. Do you guys know what book this is? This is the Bible. This is God's special book for us. And in this Bible, we find the Easter story, but we also find what happened after the Easter story of Jesus appearing to so many people and so many of his friends. So you guys, I wanna see one of these stories right now. So let's go ahead and put on our listening ears and our thinking caps, and let's watch our Bible story. Stories of the Bible. Jesus appears to Thomas. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. For he was risen, he was alive. What? Hey Jesus appeared to his disciples to show them that he was alive. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. Hey, hey Thomas! Later, the disciples told Thomas, "We have seen the Lord," but Thomas said. I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Oh, hey guys. Peace be with you, he said. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas said, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Okay, I absolutely love that Bible story because it shows us that Jesus showed up to a ton of his friends after Easter to prove that he was really alive. But we saw that one of his disciples, Thomas, he wasn't so sure that Jesus was really alive, right? He wanted proof for himself. He wanted to see Jesus and touch his hands to know that he was really alive. And did he get that proof? Yeah, he did. We saw in our Bible story that Jesus showed up to Thomas and showed him that he was really alive. So you guys, what we learned from that story is even when we're not sure about Jesus, we can trust him. We can know that he did what he said he was going to do on Easter. I think that we should think a little bit more about that. We should think about how we can trust Jesus even though we can't see him. So we are going to color. Everyone get out a piece of paper and a crayon or a marker, and let's color with Gus. Hey friends, Gus here. It's time to color. Today we're drawing this guy, Thomas. We'll start with his nose, which is a triangle. Then we'll draw the side of his face, so we'll do a curved line here. Then we'll come across with a line. 
Now go around here and draw a line down. Now we'll draw a line across his face for his beard, but don't draw across his nose. <laughs> Give him a mouth. Come over here and let's do a C for his ear. Then draw a line up. Now, let's give him some eyes. So draw two big circles and put little circles in them. Let's give him some hair. We'll go from the top of his ear and do a little curve. Now let's connect the top of the side of his face with the top of his hair with a small curve. And now let's do a big sideways J shape like this. Now let's put some upside down U's for the rest of his hair and connect it down. Finish up by coloring in his mouth and eyes. And there you go! Thanks for drawing with me! Bye! Our Bible verse is John 3.16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That verse has a lot of really big words in it, but it just means that God sent his son. And who's God's son? hey -o. Jesus. God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. Sins are things that we think and that we do that God says are wrong. And we should be punished for those sins, but Jesus took that punishment for us on Easter. He died for our sins so that we can be forgiven and be with God forever in heaven when we believe in him. That is the good news of Easter. And I think that we should sing about it right now. So everyone stand up on your feet and we're gonna go ahead and sing John 3, 16. You ready? Come on, Dan! All right, 
history hunters. So today we're on the hunt for something very special. Now you probably know what it is. It's metal. Now sometimes metal can be buried under the earth for hundreds of years. Other times it could be a quarter or a penny that just fell out of your pocket. Either way, we're going on the hunt for it. But before we do, I got a trusty tool that I need to take along with me, my metal detector. Now this just came in the mail yesterday, and wow, is it beautiful. State of the art, one of the top of its class. Now this is gonna help us detect the metal that's underneath the Earth's surface. So let's go on and hit it. Follow me, Dan. All right, so we made it to the dig site. Let's see if we can find some metal. Come on, Dan. No metal, Dan! Nothing over here, nothing. No metal. No metal! We're getting a reed, Dan! We're getting a reed! Over here, Dan! We're getting another reed, Dan! We got metal! We gotta stop bringing these to the dig site, Dan. Well, friends, it's a hard day to be a history hunter today. No metal, absolutely zero readings. Now, I think it has to be the region. There's too many of these big boulders in the way for us to get any type of treasure. And these rocks, these are all getting in the way. And it looks like we might have to change spots. Dan? I don't think that's a rock. Dan, that's a, that's a tooth. This is a T-Rex tooth. Wow. There might not be metal here, but there might be more fossils. If there's a mom T-Rex, there must be a baby and a whole family. We gotta go hunting, Dan. Let's go. Oh, get the shovel, Dan. Just chiseling away at the hillside, Dan. Ah. Careful, Dan. So we've been chipping away at this hillside for a while, and I think this is the most promising spot. Any type of bones or fossils are gonna be right here in this area. So give it one more big push, Dan. Come on. Ah, ah Dan! Oh! Oh! Dan! Look! We got a baby T-Rex! It's the full skull! Whoa! Look at that! We gotta get this back to base camp. Let's go! Dan, get the shovels! It's pretty exciting to think that this fossil right here is a family member of that beast right there. Now, I'm so glad I didn't give up on this guy. This fossil might have been my favorite discovery yet. It's pretty awe-inspiring to think about how many more fossils like this are around the world just waiting to be found. As humans, we can't see everything that God can. We can only take in right what's in front of us. Now, when things aren't going our way, or when we have an incomplete picture of God's plan for our lives, the first thing we may go to is doubt. I wasn't patient earlier, and that made me doubt if it was possible. And I wanted to give up just when I was about to make this discovery. The same is true for our lives. Like me in the metal detector, we sometimes go about things the wrong way because we don't trust God enough to do the things his way. It can be easy to look at someone like Thomas and judge him for not believing Jesus without proof. But the truth is, most of us aren't any better. When we have doubts, we can't let that get in the way of our trust and confidence in God. We have to remember that he's always with us and he keeps his promises. Now, whether you've just accepted Christ as your personal savior or you've been a Christian your whole life, life can still be pretty confusing sometimes but we have to remember to trust God, even when we don't know where life's going to take us. Now, that's all I've got for you guys this week, but we have a lot more research to do on this baby T-Rex. We'll see you in seven days. Come on, Dan, we got work to do.